Welcome back guys, it's Alex from Strength Hacks here. Going over a recent upper body session today. It was max effort and I hit PRs on every lift, so I was really stoked about that. I was going for three sets of one around 90% and I did get a little carried away. Uh, as you can see in the first video, I'm hitting 260 plus the chains. I haven't weighed them yet, but I estimate they're around 20 pounds a piece, so that floor press was around 300 pounds at lockout. The second and third sets are with 250, so about a 290 lockout. Um, in the first set with 260, it didn't really have the speed I was looking for, so that's why I went down to 250. The first one with 250 moved really good, but then the second rep with 250, it didn't move as fast as I would like. And that's okay, though, because it was the last week of the mesocycle. I'm on a deload this week, so you know I'm recuperating from all that extra fatigue, but... Say if that was in the beginning of a mesocycle and I overshot my singles like that, it would spell out disaster for the rest of my training block. I'd have to auto-regulate a few things and course correct. That way I don't mess up my fatigue too early on in the mesocycle and uh, just pretty much thwarting my progress. And as you can see on those floor presses, most of the chain, it was up in the air, even in the bottom position. So I'm really happy with the numbers that I hit today. I think if I did a straight weight, I would be able to beat my previous PR of 290 on the floor press. I'm pretty sure a 300 floor press is in the cards now for me. So maybe next muzzle cycle, um, maybe second or third week, you know, uh, I'll do that and see how it goes. So after my three sets of one, I stripped down to 195 pounds plus 40 pounds in chains. I got nine reps for a few sets. I was really happy with this one because just goes to show that I'm gaining strength. Last time I did that variation, uh, about a month ago, I got 192.5 for eight reps. So I was able to get another rep with an additional 2.5 pounds. It doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, slow and steady gains are the best gains, honestly. They're more sustainable, and if I keep them up long term, I'm going to be in a really good spot down the road. And another reason why I'm happy about it is because I still had a rep in the tank uh, I probably could have gotten 10 reps with that 195, whereas when I got 192 for 8, it was an all-out 8-rep uh, max. My short-term goal is going to be 200 pounds plus 40 pounds chains for 10 reps, uh, and then I'm going to test my flat bench 1-rep max after that, just to see how much carryover I truly get from the floor press. So moving on to the clip after that is a new o overhead press variation I've been doing lately. It's a... Uh, close grip with suicide grip and it feels a lot different than the standard OHP it really hammers my front delts and triceps and uh, since I'm using such a close grip which I'm not used to on the OHP I can't bring it down all the way to my chest like I normally do so it's just kind of it feels like a bodybuilder fluff and pump constant tension kind of thing going on and I'm really liking it so far my triceps feel bigger and stronger than ever before Moving on to assisted ring pull-ups after that, I get about 30 pounds of help out of the bottom with that red mini band. It's just a great variation for getting a lat stretch, lets you go down all the way without the shoulder wear and tear due to that, you know, snappy nature of the resistance bands that just helps pull you up in a way that saves your joints a little bit. And make sure you're following along on my road to a 100 pound weighted pull-up at 220 pounds. I did accomplish this feat before when I weighed 190 pounds and I just I want to get back there now that I'm a little heavier. I haven't done heavy pull-ups in a while but they, as I'm starting to progress they are getting they're getting heavier and heavier but they aren't feeling so. I hit 60 pounds a few weeks ago and now that I have the dip belt I went up to 70 pounds for two reps last week and it felt just as light as the 60 pounds. I'm not sure if that has to do with the fact that the backpack was kind of restricting my shoulder blades a little bit, but either way, 100 pounds is coming soon, so make sure you stay tuned to see that. So basically, my pull-up programming to accomplish this, it's real simple. On one day, one upper body day, I do a variation for higher reps, like these assisted ring pull-ups. It's just a great accessory that has a good stimulus to fatigue ratio. Basically, it's good for getting in a lot of volume without trashing your recovery. And then for the other upper body day, I ramp up to a two rep max on the weighted pull up and I just keep adding weight each week. It's been going very well so far. So after the pull ups, you see me doing the goat of triceps accessories. 
the safety squat bar JM press. It's really starting to beef up my triceps and elbows. I can feel the lower heads of my tricep just getting thicker and thicker each week. Right now I'm moving 98.5 pounds and I'm going all the way down to my nose, which if you've ever tried the JM press, that's really hard. It's really tough on the elbows. But with the, the arc motion of the safety squat bar, how I can rock it and lean it back on my torso with the handles, it just it feels really nice and it doesn't hurt my elbow joints at all. I get a great tricep pump from it. Once it hits 120 pound reps on that variation, I'll definitely have a 315 pound bench. I'm really looking forward to hitting that milestone. After that, I moved on to the deficit pendley rows. They're going very well. Got a new PR, 210 pounds for 12 reps. My lats have been growing very well from these and uh, also from starting pull-up training again. Now that I do these uh, deficit pendley rows, I'm surprised that the performance is so good because uh, I'm doing them as a second back movement. I'm doing the pull-ups first and then going on to the rows, whereas before I would just do the rows first and pull-ups afterwards. And the fact that I'm still hitting all-time PRs on the row goes to show that my back strength is getting better than ever before. After the rows, I moved on to the snatch grip high pull where I hit a big PR, uh, 100 and, or sorry, 205 pounds for 10 reps. My best before that was only 190 for 10 reps actually, so I got a 15 pound PR on this today. And I probably could have done 12 reps, but since I was moving a weight I've never handled before on the snatch grip high pull, I wanted to make sure to play it safe. It's always good to leave a couple reps in the tank when you're trying out new things. That way you give yourself a little bit of room to grow. If you go to your all-out maximal potential on day one, you know it's very hard to better that performance the next time. you got to give yourself a little more time to grow. Unless you're a complete beginner, then your gains are pretty rapid. And honestly, it feels like I've been getting noob gains all over again just due to my latest program tweak since my meet. You know, increasing my GPP with the winning warm-ups, just uh, manipulating my volume and intensity is a little more smartly. It, it made a huge difference. Uh, proper programming is the way to go. If you don't have a coach, I really recommend you get one or at least teach these things to yourself. There's a lot of good free information out there if you're willing to put the time in and study and learn these things because it's going to take your training to the next level with uh, less fatigue, less wear and tear, you know, more longevity. That's, that's the name of the game. Everyone wants to be doing this for life. And if you don't, I don't know what's wrong with you. So then last but not least, I moved on to a superset between the football bar semi reverse curl. And then right after I moved on to seated rear delt flies. So with the semi-reverse curl, I'm basically using that inner grip, and it's upside down, so it's like a, it's like a TP, basically. If uh, you were to connect the lines between the angle of my hands, it's going to have your arms in a slightly pronated position. It's great for hitting forearms as well as biceps. I got 105 pounds for seven, pounds, or seven reps here, and I stopped using the regular V-grip with slight supination because... I was starting to get overuse. I had a slight bicep pain, and I only felt it when I was doing that particular uh, angle and that particular exercise. As soon as I flipped it over, there was no pain, and I was able to get a great pump. You know, uh, I, I'm excited to see the better forearm gains that are going to come due to progressing on this movement. And then as far as it goes with the seated rear delt flies, I'm really enjoying the shoulder health benefits that I'm getting from doing these along with these uh, banded rhomboid pinches that I started doing as well. I got those from, uh, well, in inspired from Jam Blakely. He was just doing them uh, free weight, uh, having his client squeeze his finger blade or finger that he put in between the shoulder blades. I don't have anyone to train with, uh, so I just take some bands and hold them in my hands and use that as resistance as I'm pulling back my rhomboids and pinching my shoulder blades together. I'm going to be making a video showing you guys how to do that soon, so stay tuned for that. And that's going to wrap up this workout vlog. I hope you guys found this informative. Uh, maybe take some inspiration, try a few of these things out. I really like all these exercises. I'm probably going to keep most of them in my next mesocycle, just due to how effective they are. You know, If, they, if it still works, why would I throw it out? 
So I'm still making progress. I might as well keep doing these movements until either progress stops or I start feeling pain. So make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and drop a comment down below to show some support. I'm really trying to get boosted up in the algorithm. Thank you very much and have a nice day.